Corva Tundri Hill in the Finnish region of Lapland is believed to be the home of Santa Claus. While modern tales say that Santa Claus lived in these hills with his friendly reindeers and preparing gifts for kids all year round, Finnish tales depict him as something entirely different. In these folklores, Santa is a demonic creature who walks barefoot in the snow, hunts down naughty children, and boils them in a cauldron. The movie starts 24 days before Christmas. Two men from the research team of Sub-Zero Firm are drilling on top of the Corvatuntari Hill, the hill that is popular for being Santa's home. Riley, the team leader, listens to his concerned subordinate, Mr. Green, explaining about the sawdust that they found while drilling. Riley is ecstatic to hear the news as he seems to know something about the place other than it being just a random hill. He swiftly discloses that the hill was actually used to conceal something back in the day by the ancient inhabitants of Lapland named Sammy. They stored ice by wrapping it around the sawdust, and discovering sawdust means that the team is on the right track. Riley demands the mining team to finish excavating the hills by Christmas. Mr. Green follows an overjoyed Riley towards the rest of the miners who hand him an ice block that they found just minutes ago. Excited by the discovery, Riley gives them permission to detonate the hill in hopes of hastening the process. Eavesdropping on their conversation are two local kids, Pietari and Yuso, who are hiding behind the crates. Their curiosity about the drill led them to trespass into the forbidden site by cutting open the protective fence. Yusa, who understands English, translates to Pietari that the hill will be blown up. On their way back home, Pietari can't help but think that Santa is buried inside the hill, which is why he believes the miners want to blow it up. The two boys quarrel about Santa's existence as Yusa teases Pietari for believing in hearsay folklores. At that point in time, they hear an explosion at the top of the hill, witnessing the excavation process being put into action. Unable to quench his curiosity, Pietari surrounds himself with a pile of books about Santa Claus in his attic bedroom and begins reading them. But to his dismay, all the information he finds about Santa scares him. Santa is depicted as a horned demonic creature that walks barefoot in the snow, hunts down naughty children, and boils them in a cauldron. Disturbed by the information in the books, Pietari stares towards the hill, imagining Santa living so close to him. The scene then changes to Christmas Eve. Pietari's dad, Rauno, a local hunter and butcher, sets a trap for the wolves in hopes that they won't hunt down the reindeers. He finishes the trap by using a pig head as bait before walking up to his house to wake his son up. Pietari, with his floor covered in books, seems to have dozed off by the window, trying to keep watch for Santa. Suddenly, a loud thud on the window wakes him up. Afraid of Christmas that might bring home the evil Santa, Pietari tapes the 24th of the advent calendar, refraining from opening it. He looks through the window and notices bare footprints outside his window. Afraid, he runs towards Rauno, who is now at the slaughterhouse. The timid kid asks his father if he climbed the roof, but his father denies it and tells the boy to stop fantasizing and get dressed for the reindeer hunting. Realizing the footsteps were not his father's, Pietari becomes clear that Santa has been spying on him and returns home to get dressed. Soon, they reach the designated spot and meet other hunters, getting ready to hunt and sell reindeer for Christmas. They also meet Rauno's friend, Piparinen, and Yuso, who mocks Pietari yet again after hearing his doubts about Santa. Piparinen tells them that they need to be extra careful as the explosions might have alarmed the wolves. However, none of them know what is actually happening on the hill. Right then, they see a reindeer moving towards them. Everyone gets ready to herd, but they are all taken aback as only two reindeers enter. To find out what kept the remaining animals back, Piparinen, Rauno, and the two little boys go off in their snowmobile only to find a scene that shocks everyone. There is a herd of reindeer slaughtered near the border fence for an unknown reason. Just then, Aimo, a fellow reindeer herder, and Yusos father, enters the scene. However, from the other side of the fence, he shows everyone the hole he discovered, which makes the adults assume that the wolves have made their way through to kill the reindeers. The little boys start panicking, 
thinking that the hole they made caused all the trouble, but since no one knows it was them, Yusa suggests they stay quiet, while the men silently follow an enraged Rauno, who has broken the security gate towards the hill. Pietari examines one of the reindeers and notices a bare footprint. He instantly realizes that it was Santa's doing, which only adds to his fear. By evening, they reach the top of the mountain, only to find out that the drillers have already fled. The men gather around a huge hole and assume the drillers must have found something while mining. Pietari, however, is still inside the office where he finds a diagram on the wall through which he learns that they have dug up Santa. Disappointed, the group returns home for dinner. Back at Pietari's home, he explains to Yusa that Santa has escaped while stapling his advent calendar. When he brings up the topic about the hole, Yusa warns him to forget about it before returning home. Following that, Pietari goes down to have dinner with his father, who has prepared gingerbread and milk. To lighten the mood, he tells his dad that the dinner tasted just like his late mom's cooking, but the man is sad about the money he lost because of the dead reindeer. After dinner, Pietari once again stays by his window, but this time holding a bunch of keys so that the clanking would help him wake up if he falls asleep. Back at Corva Tunturi, a concerned Mr. Green calls Raleigh to send a helicopter, claiming something terrible has happened. Yet Raleigh cuts him off and asks if the cargo is ready, to which Green replies that the extracted cargo was a living creature. Regardless of Green's constant call for help, Riley only cares about the cargo. Mr. Green goes silent mid-conversation as his teammates' safety helmets roll all over the place. A man appears in the scene who seems to have wiped out the rest of the people. It is finally the day of Christmas and Rauno is trying to heat the fireplace, but suddenly a loud pop occurs, sending soot into his place. Pietari runs down to find his dad holding the trap he set for Santa last night. Rauno grounds his son because of his actions, however Pietari goes out for a short time and comes across the missing fox bait. Rauno rushes to see what happened and checks the fox trap he had set. As soon as he sees what is lying in the trap, he sends his son home, despite Pietari's continuous pleas to look at it. Then Rauno calls Piparinen who is dressed in a Santa suit, and they take a huge bag into the slaughterhouse. Inside the bag is none other than Santa Claus, in the demonic form that the books and the folklore depicted. They lay him on the slaughter table and, assuming he is dead, start to amputate his arms to wipe out the evidence of the illegal trap he set. Suddenly, the old man jerks his hands, alerting that he is still alive. They carefully check his belongings and find an ID, that actually belongs to Mr. Green. Somewhere else, Pietri escapes from his house and goes to inspect the trap where he finds a sack with a scary straw doll. After that, he climbs over the window and peeps at what his dad is doing, but he gets noticed in no time. The men go out to find Pietri, but he is fast enough to run to a sheriff's car and drive off with him. Rauno leaves his friend behind and follows the sheriff's car that comes to a halt at Aimo's house. The sheriff reveals that he heard complaints all over the village about stolen dryers, heaters, and now sacks that were stolen from Aimo's potato storage. Pietari by now has rushed to Yusos room where he finds a straw doll just like the one he had found at the trap. He runs to the adults and tells them that Yuso has been kidnapped, but Aimo just shrugs it off saying he must have gone out and would be home soon. Rauno then takes Aimo to his home to tell him about the old man they found in the trap. They expect to meet an unconscious old man, but are surprised to see a frantic Piparinen whose ears are bitten off. Piparinen exclaims that the strange old man did it and warns them not to go inside. Even so, the men enter the slaughterhouse, pointing the gun at the old man who is still unresponsive. In the end, they decide to keep him hostage so that they can ask for a ransom if the mining company reaches out. Pietari at this moment is at his home calling all his friends, slowly figuring out that all of them have gone missing. He goes to talk to his dad about this but little does the group know that his scent has alerted the old man, making him turn his head towards him. Pietari talks to his dad outside the house and asks him to spank him for being a bad child. Furthermore, he confesses about the hole he made and tells him about Santa, which leaves his father confused. 
Just then, the old man chews through the broom, scaring Piparinen into screaming for help. Curious of everything, Pietari enters the room, which further makes the old man get up from his place. Upon taking a closer look, he explains that the old man is an evil Santa that has kidnapped all the children. The men finally believe him and comprehend that the old folklore is indeed true. The men then tie the old man up and watch over him while munching on the gingerbread. A while later, they are interrupted by a call on the radio inside Mr. Green's jacket. On the other side is Riley, who still doesn't know about everything that went wrong at the hill. Riley informs them that a helicopter will be there to pick up Santa in no time. The men, who just lost so much income because of the dead reindeer, decide to sell Santa to Riley to make some money for the winter. They dress the old man in a Santa suit and take him in a cage. Throughout the way, the old man looks at Pietari with a hungry look on his scary face. An hour later, Riley arrives in a helicopter as promised and comes to look at Santa. The men try to ask him for money, but as Aimo is an affluent English speaker, Riley doesn't understand them. While the men are busy with the old man, Pietari makes his way to the big hangar. Riley goes near the cage and examines the old man. As the old man's eyes start glowing, Riley abruptly urges everyone to keep their guns down and smile as broadly as they can. He then tells them that the old man in the cage is just one of Santa's elves and not Santa himself. In that brief moment, the light goes out and the helicopter's pilot disappears with a scream. The men suddenly freeze in horror as they see many naked old men all around them, ready to rescue the prisoner who actually happens to be an elf. At the same time, they realize that Pietri is missing and go towards the hangar while defending themselves. Riley, however, is on the floor, wearing an axe for a hat. The three men finally get into the hangar, relieved to have gotten away from the elves, but find an unwelcoming sight inside. A huge creature with horns lay frozen in heaps of ice in the middle of the hangar. It is none other than Santa Claus, who is surrounded by heaters, dryers, and everything that the elves have stolen from the villagers to break their master free from the ice. They notice the sacks that have filled the place and hear children's voices coming from them. Aimo finds Yusaw in a sack and unties him. Unable to think of a way out, the elders go into a state of panic and start screaming to block the entrance. Pietari, who has remained calm all this time, grabs their attention and reminds them that the elves won't leave the hangar as long as the kids are there. While thinking of a way out, his eyes land on some explosives which he thinks can be used to blow up Santa Claus. Everyone agrees to follow Pietari's plan and Piparinen, who knows how to fly the helicopter, is the first to head out. Rauno hands him some gingerbread and Piparinen uses them to distract the elves. Taking the chance, he runs towards the helicopter and takes off in no time. He flies it above the hangar and uses the radio to communicate with Pietari. The two men put the bags of children into the cargo net and hook the net into the helicopter through a hole in the roof of the hangar. Pietari then climbs onto the net and claims that all the children must be together for the plan to work. The two men are left in the hangar to perform their part of the plan, which is to plant explosives into the ice. But before that, they watch the little boy fly away, in silence, with admiration for everything he bravely came up with. Pietari instructs Piparinen to fly the helicopter all over the hills to lure the elves with the help of children's sense. As an astonishing number of elves start following the helicopter, Pietari instructs Piparinen to fly over to the reindeer pen to capture them. Unfortunately, they realize that the gates are closed, which will disrupt the plan. They face another problem as the helicopter cannot land due to the cargo net. So Pietari makes a brave decision. He jumps onto the reindeer pen and goes to open the gate, deciding to sacrifice himself to save everyone else. He then turns on the electricity to keep the fence energized and waits for the old elves to come onto him. On the other hand, the two men have finished decorating Santa with dynamite and are ready to leave. However, they bring the two horns along with them to sell them for money. As they leave their truck, the hangar explodes and a gush of relief washes over them. Pietari, who is scared of the approaching elves, waits for them to run over him, but finds them frozen in their tracks. 
Piperinen witnesses the explosion and informs Pietari that Santa was destroyed, so they no longer had a job to do. Pietari tells Piperinen to send the children to their respective houses as he stays back admiring the snowfall with the elves who just stand there. Later at dawn, the three men come to the pen, along with Yuso, where they find out that Pietari has locked the elves in the pen and even counted them. And in probably the darkest twist yet, the boy then gets an idea to sell the elves as Santa. When they calculate the total worth the 198 elves would be, they are all astonished. Proud of everything his son did, Rauno approaches the kid and embraces him. It is now next year, and 312 days before Christmas, the three men are giving the humble elves a nice bath to sell them all over the world. Exactly 76 days before Christmas, the elves are dressed in clean white clothes and are taught to carry a baby, caress them, and hand away gifts. Aimo even gives festive hats to the elves as presents. It is finally 24 days before Christmas and the friends put the newly made Santas into boxes that are ready to be sent to different places. Piperinen now owns a cargo plane that is ready to deliver Santas all across the world. These villagers from Lapland have successfully built an elf trafficking ring, but at least put an end to the evil Santa and created a happy Santa, known for loving children. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.